What up, Naughty Steppers? Connor Whitmore here again with another review for you on the Naughty Step channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the new EP from Virtual Riot, released on Disciple Records, Save Yourself. Here we have the latest collection from German native Valentin Brunn, aka Virtual Riot whose 2019 prior to this I'd say had been relatively low-key in comparison to previous years. Not to say it hadn't brought about some memorable material from him already though. The larger-than-life gang shit with Virus Syndicate and Dion Timmer, the purposeful nothing with Mode Step, the colossal Das Riddim with Infect. Not forgetting of course the Disciple Mega Collab We Don't Play, on which Bruns seemed to play a pretty big part. But then you think back to last year for example where he released two EPs, featured on multiple projects from other producers also contributing to a load of compilations along the way, uh, the more recent past definitely seems less eventful for him. But now the wait is finally over, another set of Virtual Riot tunes for us to dive into, his first since last October's preset Junkies. A project I definitely enjoyed in moments, but which I can't say had much on the diversity posed by German engineering. But does Save Yourself bring the variety back into his music? Undoubtedly in my opinion, but I wouldn't say it has complete free reign. Whilst this EP does showcase once again how versatile Brand's sound is, also how sonically insane and remarkably constructed it is, it does also have its fair share of noise that for me dampens the experimental beauty that the collection provides. Basically, what Save Yourself does, uh, something I'd hoped Brun had got past by this point, is provide a lot of loudness. Engaging in what dubstep is at the moment, mostly noise and force, creating stuff for the live environment, and not taking those examples into his creative hands quite enough, supplying the heaviness but not the flavour or colour to match. But where is that apparent, I hear you ask? Well, let's go through a couple of examples. Firstly, the penultimate track, The Recall. The heaviness here originally coming out of nowhere, a blurting out of sound that seems too quick to the point it feels like it's gonna fall over itself. With a similar percussive layout to gang shit actually, providing a sort of punch, but one you feel could be unleashed way more. I mean, yeah, do you see what I mean? The second main drop is just a stomping rhythm version of the first one, has purpose to it, but mostly a bit ordinary. And the progressions to each of these drops are quite gnarly, uh, some nice twisty sounds in there, but more than anything, just a bit loud and overbearing. Just before that, we have the track Goat, which above all else seems like a moody good tribute. I mean, maybe that's why he called it GOAT? I don't know. But anyway, whilst I enjoy the sharp, crisp execution of that first drop, uh, following that it seems to me to lose its way a bit. The double drop, which is the first drop broken up a bit, has a good energy to it, but the winding screeches are a bit much, and that's before I get onto the second drop. Which is another moody good tribute, but more drawn out, ponderous, not a lot going on, although the second halves of each of those sequences pick up the track well. You have the opener and title track, which granted has some good dubstep in it, but other bits that are again just a bit too in your face. Just the one drop here, and the way the devilish dubstep originally pierces through is really good, all the squeaky, high pitch electric stuff in the progression as well. But then you have more of that stomping guttural stuff in between, which is just a bit vapid and devoid of feeling. The biggest culprit however, arguably being the track that follows that, Wallmonger, which is a succession of fuzzy walls of sound a la Riot 10. Better assembled of course, and more going on, that double drop in particular has some truly fantastic fruity synths layered over the top, but the main sections really are so obnoxious in their delivery, I'm all for a bit of aggression and savagery but really, this is a bit OTT for me. <laughs> And I think that's my main issue with the examples I've given here. I get their inclusion as a point of contrast, but it's noise they add more than anything. The kind of material that just makes me feel like he's letting himself down a bit. Uh, not denying that it's incredibly well put together, uh, the definition of everything is amazing. But when I think of Virtual Riot, I think of colour, flavour, life, and these examples aren't that, something I feel he's explored enough by this point. I felt inclined to mention the dubstep version of the Psytrance drop we get on Hysteria, but that one in particular is so well cut that I can't be talking bad of it. But that does lead me nicely onto the experimental aspect of the EP, the other side of it if you will, which really does give Save Yourself its exuberance. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've seen so much trap from Brun on a single project ever. 
a massive five of the eight tunes containing some sort of trap section. Uh, to start with, we'll go back to Hysteria, potentially the most varied track on the whole EP. Which, as I mentioned, kicks off with a very pointed side trance drop, a load of very fine skittish flickers running over the top, something which runs into the second drop. Where the trap comes in. Uh, whether I'm really feeling it, I'm not so sure. I think it could do with some more gruesome stuff underneath, growls, bellows, etc. But again, it's one of those where it's just so unbelievably well cut that really, you do just have to sit back and admire it for what it is. <laughs> Just before that, we have the trap snippets on Wallmonger, which aren't special in sound, but do help to keep that track ticking along. We get a brief shimmering trap sequence in the middle of the recall. I like the semi-thrilling appeal it's got going on there. On the final tune, in sides, we get a lovely trap section, following the upbeat introduction, wonderful flow, everything playing off each other so well, stunning. And on track 5, self-checkout, we get for me the most impressive drops on the whole EP. Kicking into gear with a trickling down moment, reminiscent of Must Die's Project Ghost, and following that, we get some seriously well articulated glitchy trap. In design, not massively dissimilar to something you might hear from Ulusile, but the very intricate percussion ensures he makes those sounds his own. The flow and rhythm are fantastic, couple of bits that are a bit too glitchy and risk holding the song back a bit, but overall, it's a really great ride. <laughs> And the way it just keeps building on that first drop more and more over its course is so well done, becoming darker in the double drop, then more jagged, constantly taking it up a level, all the while so continuous and free-flowing, musicality on point throughout as well, understated but really, really leaves a mark. Beyond the trap and dubstep, however, there are other genres that Brun explores across the near half-hour runtime. And this is where Save Yourself gets its brightness from, its prettier side, and to start with, I'm going to mention the interlude, Iteration. Opening up in this ethereal, dreamy way before these strong chords emerge from below, growing into something quite heartfelt and hopeful. And then the drop, which is a blend of glacial sounds and glitchy synths, very detailed, pretty much immaculate in its construction, harking back to his throwback EP. <laughs> The glowing high pitch effects I find a bit much, but on the whole, a really nice point of reflection midway through the EP. Annoying that it's so short though, I mean I get that it's an interlude but it could have been longer, you know just as I'm really getting into it, it's over. But on this lighter side of things I must also talk about the closer insides, Brun again finishing a collection with a more chilled number, and again it really works. I mean, it isn't completely chilled. The drop we get is full of these shiny, tripled whipping sounds, originally quite dark, but ending up becoming quite cute. My main take from that drop though, being that it's really nice to see him go quite thin on the ground with his percussion for a change, those talk sounds are great. Surrounding that drop though, it's wave after wave of loveliness, the pure opening, the way it joyously picks up with the lively breakbeat percussion. That aforementioned trap section before the drop, and then after the drop, we have probably my favourite sequence on the whole EP. This wonderfully fruity, jumpy, garage-like sequence that is non-heavy virtual riot in full flow, something you take right out of his Still Kids EP. The vocal touches in the background, the bouncy effects, the whole section is superb, and the one part of the EP that always sends a chill down my spine. Oh, it's beautiful! Finishing that track and the EP off with that warm, hearty bass and rain, and following some of the noise we get beforehand, it's a good reminder that he has that time-stopping delivery in his locker. On that note though, I think it would be worth talking some more about the outros and introductions that I find particularly impactful on Save Yourself. I enjoy the gnarly, clockwork opening of Wallmonger, how it snaps into consciousness with that heavy metal build, the Japanese counting before the drop is really cool as well. Following that, on Hysteria, the snappy vocal over the frantic instrumental in the second half of the introduction is so, so good. First point in the EP where I feel I'm really getting into it. Later on in the collection, I'm also enjoying the outro of the recall, echo-like, atmospheric, pulsating, effectively introducing the final number. And the rest are just as you would expect, really. Not bad in any way, just standard. 
But also, the way that most of these tunes blend into one another is really, really awesome. It's almost as if he made two or three massive songs and then just split them up to make them into an EP. A couple quick little points that I'm going to talk about here before rounding up my thoughts completely. Firstly, there are so many fake out drops on this EP, my word. We get them on the title track, Wallmonger, Goat, The Recall. I mean, the odd couple is alright, but I can't lie, they do get slightly tiresome after a while. In Hysteria, we even have Building Upon Builds, which is just a bit of a stretch, really. I mean, it gives the EP a certain hype, but for me, he just about overdoes it. Secondly, a lot of vocal samples used across the EP, and perhaps tellingly, I've noted hardly any of them down. Which is because for the majority, they're all very generic, again fitting the hype aspect of the EP, but nothing on the character of those we get on the German Engineering EP, for example. When it comes to evaluating Save Yourself as a whole though, I must say I'm still quite torn between being really impressed, and at the same time not so much. The fashioning of sounds is once again really good, massive variety in sound usage, so detailed, different genres are explored. Not only that, but there are a couple of tracks here that I'm really liking from start to finish. I love how it's a completely solo EP as well. But for me, there's also enough stuff holding that goodness back, material that seems far more concentrated on whether it's hitting hard enough, as opposed to its ingenuity. I think it says a lot that the songs I enjoy here don't try too hard to make themselves known, more natural in feel than some of the dubstep we get, which is very ostentatious. A sign perhaps that he's run out of juice on the heavy dubstep front, uh, some people will enjoy that stuff, and that's fair, but for me, it's where he falls short here. But for me, I see that as an opportunity for him to try out even more new things. I'd love to hear a completely experimental EP from him, where he puts the dubstep to the side for a bit and tries out some completely new stuff. Maybe a freeform bass tune, maybe a mid-tempo tune, another dark house tune, another drum and bass tune. He has it in him to do that. And what's more, I feel like his style deserves it. Uh, we're talking about one of the very best producers in bass music here. His style warrants that kind of creativity and freedom. End of the day though, Save Yourself is another EP I could talk about forever, with the amount going on, one of the things we love most about Virtual Riot. In that regard, it never gets boring over the half hour runtime, Brun doing really well once more to keep listeners locked in, with next to no repetition available. However, I'm not sure as an entire collection it ranks alongside his best work. I hear decent ideas but not a lot that's really spurring me forward or making me want to move. It has colour, it has flavour, it has some really brilliant ideas, but personally, overall, not quite enough feeling to really get me fully raving about it just yet. Now in terms of my favourite on the EP, then I think I would have to go with Self Checkout. I've touched on this already, but it has one of the most natural progressions that I've heard in a fair while, and has the best flow, amazing sounds on show as well, most complete in feel, in conclusion. And in terms of recommendations, if you enjoyed the EP, then really I think it just depends which songs you like from it. There's some classic VR stuff in there, of course, so if you like that, check out his old stuff. There's a bit of Moody Good in there, as I mentioned earlier, a bit of Ulusail in there. If you like those songs, check out their old stuff, or their usual stuff, that's what I mean. Uh, but yeah, really, it's whatever takes your pick. And so there we have it, my thoughts on the new EP from Virtual Riot, Save Yourself. Uh, but what did you guys make of the EP? Do you have a favourite track from the 8? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, then be sure to give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell along the way so you can be notified whenever I upload a new video to the channel. And my social media accounts are linked in the description box down below. For some other EP reviews on the channel, check out the link next to my head somewhere. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys, so be sure, as always, to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see all of you legends in the next one. Peace out.